So November this year, 2021, marks a significant occasion that it's Australia's first IMPA Baby Safety Month. Hi, I'm Katina Falado, representing the amazing IMPA, Infant Nursery Product Alliance of Australia. We are focusing on different baby safety themes every week. And today we have two amazing guests that come from a midwife background, um, representing all things safe sleep. So um, it's a, a fantastic way to kick off the beginning of Safety Month with Safe Sleeping for Babies. I'll introduce my guests. So we have the lovely Liz Wilkes from My Midwives, who's the managing director there, all the way from Toowoomba, Queensland. So hello and welcome. Hi. And then we have Jane Wiggle from Red Nose, who is their chief midwife. And she's joining us from Melbourne, Australia. So down Thank in Victoria. You. Hello. <laughs> nice to be here. Good to good to be here too. How are you, Liz? Yeah, no, I'm really well today. Thanks, Kat. Good, good, good. Okay, so there's a lot of conflicting information out there for parents when it comes to safe sleeping. And I think that um, with all of that confusion, there's a lot of myths flying around, things that they've been taught from their parents and generations before. I think what we need to sort of debunk today are some of those myths and kind of really sort of outline in a very simple and clear way what is the best way uh, to aid baby into a safe sleeping environment or just safe sleeping in general. So my first question would be, how do we set up a really nice sleeping environment that is safe for baby? Mm. That's a, that's a great question and certainly parents are bombarded with so many options, you know, and different products that, out there that make um, specific claims about safety and promises of, you know, long night's sleep that have been lost, you know, since this beautiful little baby um, has come into the home. But the first yes. thing I would suggest parents uh, and caregivers do is look for the evidence behind the claims. So an evidence base is really important because then you know, you know, there's, there's, it's backed by safety, it's backed by some robust work um, to ensure the safety of that item. And so when you look for advice, you look for key organisations um, or groups that, you know, do have a very heavy evidence base. And Red Nose is one of those groups. Um, we are the authority in safe sleep in this country and very, very proud of that and have been that uh, figurehead for over 40 years now. And so... When you're looking to choose items for the nursery, really re bring it back, and I'm sure Liz will agree with me, that babies are very simple little creatures and they don't need very much. We need to keep this very simple and safe. So when you think about the Red Nose Safe Sleep recommendations, we do have six of them. Sometimes, you know, it can be a bit tricky to remember. But the key thing to take home from the Safe Sleep recommendations is airway protection and so yeah. when we're thinking about and making sure that we place babies on their back to sleep that we always keep their heads and faces uncovered that we keep them smoke free that we put them in a safe environment that we keep that safe sleep environment in the parents um, or caregivers room for the first six to 12 months and to breastfeed them we're thinking about a baby's airway so when you want to buy an item such as a cot for example you're looking for one that meets Australian standards for safety you're looking for a mattress that's lovely and firm and flat and really well fitted to the cot. And you don't really need anything else. You need a, a mattress protector if you'd like, a fitted sheet nice and firm and some lightweight blankets. Baby needs a couple of muslin wraps or a cotton wrap or whatever. Really basic. You don't have to spend lots of money. And that's really it. We don't need mobiles. We don't need bumpers or pillows or anything like that because Anything that we purchase in addition to the basics, we're adding risk. We're adding risk to a baby's airway. So guess what? The best thing to do is to remove the risk, just get it all out of the cot. We, we just don't need it. That's great advice, Jane. Keeping it simple. I love it. Um, Liz, anything to add to that? I think No, I think that's a, that's a fantastic start. And, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, um, the, the most important thing is that we aren't sort of overcomplicating over it. We're not overthinking it either. And I guess that that's where, you know, going to the organisations that have got really, really um, heaps of information available and then just pairing it back from there. So not getting yourself 
really caught up about things like, you know, exactly what temperature should the room be or what temperature should the baby be or, you know, do we have to be really, you know, exact about everything. We want to keep it really simple and really sort of low key and, and reduce your anxiety, but, you know, get the basics right first and then, you know, just sort of dull it down, keep it back, sort of pair it back from there. I love that that we dull it down and pair it back from there because what that does is it it, it helps our own um, intuition kick in. So we don't look and say, oh, you know, the temperature of the room needs to be this. Well, no, actually, let's look at our baby. Oh, my baby's looking a bit warm. I might feel the tummy with my hand. Yeah, actually, okay, well, let's make some adjustments that way. I think if we... Um, look to too much information from too many different sources of truth like we just need one source of truth or two just some key um, places to look then we can really tap into the intuition that we've all got when we've got you know when we're when we have these little babies in front of us um, and really understand as well that you know there's there's a lot of normal infant behavior out there and you know you you know you might be breastfeeding a baby and it's really wakeful and it's you know you're feeding every two to three hours and oh my god my baby's not sleeping but guess what that's that is so normal that's Such normal, normal yeah and yeah. we need to be normalizing infant behavior and not seeking problems to fix when there isn't a problem your baby isn't broken your baby's waking up because it wants you to you know wants to keep your milk supply up but it's growing really rapidly and breast milk's fantastic for your baby so of course it's going to wake yeah. up plus it loves you you smell great why not let's have a party in the middle of the night but it it's normal and i think um parents need to i guess just understand that as well like you know you have rough nights and you have really good nights but it's all part and parcel of having a little human in the house, not a robot and not someone that really necessarily knows um, what chapter of the book you're up to because I bet you 10 bucks they're behind by 10 chapters anyway. So just. Oh, I'd say so for sure. Yeah. Mm. It's, it, I mean, there is so much information out there that it would absolutely overcomplicate it, but it's a great advice to kind of keep it simple. And also to every baby is unique and that relationship between mother and baby is unique uh, and your own experience compared to that of other mothers. So mm -hmm. it is sort of feeling your way through it, but in a very, very safe way. Um, are there anything, um, any tips on settling a baby that you can kind of give parents or caregivers in that sort of sleep environment? Maybe like a, a scenario if it's late at night and they're super tired and kind of want to take an easy route, go to bed and nurse a baby in bed, that kind of thing, like what to avoid? Look, Kat, that, I think that's one of the things that we do hear from, from mums and dads all the time is, you know, that sort of the, the behaviours that they can get into that unfortunately can lead to things becoming a little bit risky. And it's not that anyone yeah. means for it to happen, but, you know, having a baby sort of lying in bed with a baby potentially... Um, you know, you're tired or even lying on, even worse still, you know, lying on a couch with a baby mm. or, or, you know, yeah. so forth and so on and, and then falling asleep. And look, so, you know, just really trying to work as a team. I always talk to, you know, if there's two parents available or if there's somebody available to assist, work as a team, work, work out the things that you can do to, you know, to make sure that you're maximising your sleep time but that you're not going to, end up with a baby sort of falling asleep and falling into a bad position or between you on a couch or lying lying a baby next to you in a bed and then and then having something occur that is you know is not sort of is not a safe sleeping practice but of course we don't want every parent to suddenly become over dramatically you yeah. know randomly concerned about things just because you're feeding a baby in bed or you're feeding a baby you know at night doesn't mean that you're going to fall asleep. Most people don't fall asleep, you know, in those situations. They feed their baby and they're absolutely able to settle it back into bed. But just be just being aware, just being aware of your environment, working as a team with your partner or whoever is supporting you in your baby's care journey. And that can really be quite beneficial if you if you, you know, both working together. Mm. Yeah, that's great advice actually. Any other hazards to avoid? In the cot space? Well, yeah. certainly things like, so just going back to the settling uh, issue as well, I guess, you know, when you're a few months down the track and, you know, sleep deprivation has um, accumulated and you're starting to feel like you'd, you'd pay any money to get a full night's sleep, 
that's when you start looking to products, you know, that claim to, you know, give you back the sleep that you lost, claim to keep babies asleep. Babies can't escape from this. Don't worry. They're not going to bother you. You know, this magic thing will do all the rocking and all the singing and all the dancing for you. You can keep sleeping. And I think that's where you've got to not allow temptation to um, get the better of you. You know, when sometimes you, um, I won't mention any brands, but if you go into a particular store and you go, oh, I really need to buy that, but you didn't know you needed it until you saw it and then you saw the price and you're like, yes, I exactly that is, I need whatever that thing does, I don't know. And it can be a little bit the same with our babies because you do, I mean, you've got time on your hands, you're not sleeping, you're desperate, you'll buy anything. So really just remembering that you need to keep it really simple. Um, and if you're really unsure or you need some advice, you can. there's plenty of um, organisations that you can call, Red Nose being one of them. We've got a safe sleep line um, that's um, available Monday to Friday during business hours. And we we receive so many calls from from all all walks of life, people from all walks of life, just with questions about what to do. And really the, the key take home is to keep it really simple and just remember that little baby's airway. Do you want to yeah. add risk to it? Well, then take out the risk, take out the pillow, take out the lamb's wool. We, we don't need any of those things. Yeah, yeah. that's what I would add to that. And the other thing is that, that, you know, in that period too, Jane, I'm sure you hear from lots of parents that start talking about moving the baby out of their room and they they might have seen their baby, the baby might have been in the room for a week or even two weeks. And then they're saying, oh, you know, baby's snuffly or it's this or it's that. That's not the time to move it out of the room. You know, that's the time no. to be really aware of what's going on with your little person and staying you know sleeping in the same room so mm. close close to your baby so you can respond to it during the night is really the best way that you can assure that the baby's actually well during the yeah the course of that night so you know I think that's a really really important factor because you know as you get tired you tend to start to blow that off and I think that that's a really a really big factor I'm sure you see that a lot with families you deal with as well Absolutely. And we know that of, of the documented SUDI cases that we have, so SUDI meaning sudden unexplained death in infancy, the vast majority of those children ha were found um, to have passed away in, in a safe sleep space, but in a separate room closed off from the parents. So we need them in the room. That's We need that protective element there um, for lots of reasons. Parents become more in tune with the baby's um, sleeping and waking patterns really early on there i mean it's there's not a lot of circadian rhythm and hormones really to help with that yet but um you know they they become more in tune with their babies and babies uh, you know parents can intervene and help that baby into a position of safety really quickly which is what we want them to do i mean we get people calling saying oh, i just don't know how or why I woke up, but thank God I did because the blanket was over her face or, you know, and it, it's true. We don't know what it, it's, it's quite um, profound, but in addition to that, it supports breastfeeding really beautifully, which is our sixth safe sleep recommendation, which again, as we know, breastfeeding is so very important for growth and development, but for immunity and to help, you know, keep our babies as well as they possibly can be again, talking about that airway, and, you know, if they do um, succumb to a virus, which, you know, we know that lots of kids, you know, it's about seven, between seven and ten um, points of contact with a virus in that first year of life. Well, if they do get a virus and a bit of a snuffly cold, we know the breast milk's going to help um, move that along really quickly. Liz, have I got that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, look, I was I was just going to chime in and say that, you know, there's, there's lots of ways that you can support breastfeeding, obviously. But, you know, as you exactly say, Jane, being close to your baby and responding to your baby so that you're, you're feeding on demand, you're actually responding yep. to your baby's cues, you're using the, the natural rhythms, the natural hormones that occur at night that will aid in your breast milk supply. So that's just such a big one. It's just it's something that's, you know, I know breastfeeding is, sometimes not simple I say I say it's a simple thing but it's breastfeeding itself can be not simple but it is in a essence it's a simple way to actually um, increase your baby's well-being on so many different levels exactly and you know we do get mums calling and you know oh well, we moved the baby out of the room because as you said before Liz oh he was really snuffly but he just kept waking up and all he ever wanted was boob and it's like but 
That's right, because your baby's normal <laughs> and healthy. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, you know, when you tap in a bit further, you find out that we're right in the middle of a growth spurt. And you think, well, of course, all we want is that because we want to boost your supply, mum, and we want to make sure that we continue to grow. So it's about normalising infant behaviour, like I mentioned before, and not overcomplicating it and not looking for problems and not looking to try and solve anything. Just let's let's go with it because... You know, they're simple people if we just kind of pair it all back, as Liz said earlier. Yeah. Mm. Great advice and good to keep in mind. It certainly is. Um, to round everything off, what would be your top three tips to parents on safe sleep for babies? Oh, Liz, do you want to go? No. It's a tricky one because there are so many. Three. Look, I mean, I think that the thing, I think that pointing out this, the six factors that Red Nose, um, that Red Nose sort of use, I think you yeah. can't really sort of pare it down and go, well, that's, there's three of those six that are more important yeah. than others. They're all really yeah. evidence-based. You know, we have seen changes over the, you know, the last 40 years, and we're very fortunate that we've got that evidence base there that demonstrates, I guess, that the one that probably um, people fall into a little bit is that parents or grandparents may say don't put baby on their back because they might choke and and you know as Jane said before the whole airway protection you know the whole the point of putting a baby onto their back is airway protection so I guess really making sure that people recognize that and know that that is just so critical when you're actually getting your baby off to sleep that that's a really important thing but again, not stressing. If you come and baby is not on its back, all you do is you're actually replacing baby onto its back and moving on again. So I guess, you know, I think that's probably, it's not the biggest one. They're all super important. No, but I think yeah. that that's a really, that's one that people sort of go, oh, my, but my grandma's told me to do this or okay. things have changed or whatever. I think that's, a, that's an important one to emphasise. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, baby on the back. Baby on the back because we know the airway protection reflexes that babies have work best in that position, particularly swallowing and arousal from sleep. And we want these kids to wake up, you know, much to the horror of them waking up for the 50th time in the night. We, we want them to do that. Um, if they're going to do a little vomit or a posit, we know it's okay. They're not going to choke on that. It's well away from the airway anatomically from how it's sitting and they're just going to swallow it back down. But if we put that baby on its tummy, that swallowing reflex is significantly depressed. They're not going to swallow. It'll aspirate into the airway, and then we've got a, a potentially a catastrophic outcome happening because unlike you and I, when something goes down the wrong way and we cough and we splutter and we kind of like get overcome and then we clear our airway, a little baby will stop breathing and they'll drop their heart rate really quickly and they'll go into respiratory distress silently. And it can happen just like that. So really keeping babies um, on their back, really, really important. Head and face uncovered, again, for the, for the airway protection. And, and, a, and a safe sleep environment that's smoke-free in the room. You can kind of blend all those together. Safe environment, smoke-free with the parents and breastfeed. I kind of said all these ones quicker to kind of make them one, but didn't work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> advice anyway. I think, yeah, it's super important. Baby on back. Yeah. 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 Really empty, really empty, boring, not Instagram worthy cot. Like really you don't take the photo of it because it's very boring. Yeah. 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 Nice firm surface and baby. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. yeah. Baby's beautiful yeah. enough. We don't need to we don't need all the fancy. Yeah. You know? That's for play yeah. during the day. That kind exactly. Of thing. So, yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Well, thank you both for today. Now, um, I will say that uh, the information you can find on Red Nose's website, which we'll put into um, the comments underneath this post, and that's rednose.com.au, and then also mymidwives.com.au as well. And for any IMPA related, um, because please go check out the website and see all of the other events that we've got coming up. So that's IMPA at, uh, sorry, impa.com.au as well. And that hotline, Jane, we'll make sure that that's in there too because I think that's super Excellent. important for parents to have as well. Thank you. So thanks again and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.